Let's go. It's your man, Mike Bowens, coming to you again, once again, live and direct. Listen, I feel hype right now. I just, you know, some days I come here and I do this and I'm just feeling more hype each and every time. I feel more motivated than any other time. I'm telling you right now. Listen, last time, I, last week, I put up a video called um, Passive Income Ideas and I asked if anybody wanted me to make a, another video on low cost, low startup cost, passive income ideas. And a lot of people have written in about this. I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna do it. This message is entitled, Low Startup Cost, Passive Income Ideas. Woo, it's a bomb going off, boom. So I'm gonna go slow because I want you to get this and I really wanna see your life change. I really wanna see people, you know, cause I believe that entrepreneurship is the cornerstone you know, in America. And I feel like if you, if you got a good income coming in and you're not working all the time, you can have time for God. You can have time to read the Bible. You can have time to drink some tea. You can have time with your family. You can have time to exercise. You can have time to just enjoy life and not think about, I got to get to work. I got to make the donuts. I got to get to work. I got to make the donuts. It was a commercial like that years ago. However, without further ado, I'm going to jump right into it. And thank you for your feedback because you letting me know exactly, exactly where you are. And so, like I said, my goal is to help as many people as possible, right? On a daily basis, right? So, and if you like this video as I'm putting out there, subscribe and, and do me a favor, share this video on your social media pages so that it can help other people because that's what it's really about. Okay, so low startup uh, costs, passive income ideas. Number one, and I, and I, I got a, quite a few that I wrote down so that um, depending on where you are, it can work for you. So first one is a cleaning business. Yeah, cleaning business. You know, it doesn't take much money to start up a cleaning business, right? Residential cleaning business. For one, you don't even have to use your own products to clean people's houses because um, a lot of times people want you to use their products that they buy. And so, you know, if you get a contract, if you get a recurrent current contract, let me make it simple for you. Say you get 10 houses, right? And at first it's you doing it. You're going and cleaning or you and your sister or you and your partner, you guys are going and cleaning the apartment, right? And now you build up a contract, you build up a, a base. So say you have 10 houses. Now what you do is after you have 10 houses, you set up a system where now they have to pay you through cash app or pay you through a PayPal. And now you get two people and put them underneath you, two employees, and now they go split up the houses. Five houses this one, five houses that one. While they're doing that, you go find more houses, right? And you get 10 more houses, right? And now you get two more people, and those two people are doing five houses there, five houses there. So now you got 20 houses, and now you can manage those people, right? Now you're not working physically anymore. Now they are. Right, and you keep adding more houses onto that and then you add more people. Now the people that you're adding, you gotta get background checks on them, you gotta get um, references from them, and then you must be bonded in insurance, insured to run this company. And when the houses um, have to be uh, uh, evacu um, evaluated to see how much you're gonna charge, it should be you going to those houses to see how much those, the prices are gonna, how much you're gonna charge the client and then when the payment has to be paid, like I said, they pay you directly. And then you pay your workers, watch this, not hourly, but you pay them commission base. That's a bomb going off. Boom! See, my wife and I had a cleaning business when we lived in, in Georgia, and this is how we ran it. We didn't run it to this efficiency, because at the time it was just the two of us. But during that process, I learned, hmm, this is a better way to do it. So even now, my wife had just started back up the cleaning business, and her business is exploding right i speak it by faith in the name of jesus because we understand the steps that we have to take and for her business to really excel and prosper the way that we desire it to and so it's not difficult right it's, it's a book called the science of getting rich i like that i listened to it. i said man this is pretty good basically it was saying that there's people who could be in the same industry as you and somebody's getting somebody's prospering and and somebody's not and they could be in the same industry in the same city doing the same thing, but they don't do things exactly the same way and they don't think the same way. 
So could it be the way that people are doing things, why they're not getting progress, why they're not getting success, is because they're doing things not the way that the people who are successful are doing it. Ooh, that's a bomb going on. I'm gonna let you drop that bomb. Put it down in the comment section below. I wanna see bombs. Bomb, 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 bomb. And so that's just one. Number two, um, landscaping business. Now, depending on where you live, right? Where I live at, it's cold some of the months and it's warm some of the months. So what a person could do is get contracts for landscaping people's property. And then when the winter time comes, get contracts to snow plow people's property. And then once you build up enough houses, same process, same principle applies. You get a truck and you get, um, what is it, the snow plow on it. And then you get somebody, pay them commission to go clean uh, all the snow of all the houses that you have contracts on. And you just have to manage them. Depending if you get more houses, then you get another truck and so forth and so on. And now you have to manage them. And you can even, once you get it big enough, you can even put a manager in place. And now the manager has to watch all of them. And then those people have to report, the manager has to report to you. So now you're using other people's labor, other people's energy to help your business. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to go slow on that one. Hmm. I just want you to let that sink in. Hmm. So you can even do the same thing with landscaping, right? I know a guy who makes a million dollars a year from cutting grass. He lives in an area where it's warm all year round. And at first people used to laugh at him. Man, you cutting, you cutting grass. But that man took that, that business and got he, got he did every house in the neighborhood which was like 30 houses. And while everybody was trying to get summer jobs, he was cutting people's grass. And then he got a team of people under him. And now he had them cutting the grass and then he just managed them. And he kept getting more contracts and more contracts and more contracts. Now that man makes a million dollars a year from cutting grass. Not too long ago in, in the city that I lived in, um, before I moved from it, a couple came from another country started a grocery store and had a part it was a mixed use property they had apartments up top right this is this is this is you know this is takes a little money this one but i just figured i'd throw the story in there in, in anyways and so basically they had apartments up top they lived upstairs and they had a small grocery downstairs and it, they only sold caribbean food and then they went and opened another store that had apartments up top and open another grocery store there. And now to date, they have about four rest of four um, groceries and they all have mixed use, uh, it's all mixed use properties and they all have apartments up top and they generate over a million dollars a year selling Caribbean goods and they have the rents from the apartments upstairs and they still live in the first floor of the apartment that of the first building that they own. So they didn't, they didn't start making a lot of money and get flashy, you know, and start buying this and buying that. I mean, to each his own. Some people can't live like that. Some people need more space and that's nothing wrong with that. You just gotta set up your income to work for you in a different kind of way, right? Another one, taxi business. You can purchase a car. I know this guy, he uh, started his taxi company. And this is at the time when I was starting my daycare business. And we was talking about it. And I was like, he was like, yeah, I'm starting my taxi company because he was working for another taxi company at the time. And at the time I needed him to drive me around back and forth to certain places. So I would call him. He was like, listen, here's my card. In case you know you're not driving or whatever, or just need a quick pickup. I'm starting my business. He bought a minivan. He got it wrapped. It was bright orange with blue writing. And before you know it, all the customers that he had when he was working at the other company, he was giving out his card when he was working for them. And then he started passing out his cards to everybody. So now he was in business driving his car. And to take that even further, he started putting other cars on the road. So now he had three other cars, plus he was driving a car. So all those drivers were paying him. And I think what his next step could have been or should have been was to put somebody in the car that he was driving 
and him stepping back and now be the dispatcher. So all of the clients now call him and he dispatch all his drivers on where they need to go. So now him himself, and then even the step after that would be to get a few more cars on the road, put somebody else there to be the dispatcher, and now he just watches over the whole operation. He don't have to be on the road. He don't have to go do uh, pay gas. He don't have to be the dispatcher. He's the person that actually manages what everyone else is doing. Next business, um, low startup cost is um, teaching online courses. You can teach an online course. Now, what do you mean? My God, I don't teach anything. Everybody has a talent doing something. Somebody, some people can sew, right? I know this lady who knows how to crochet. Well, there's people that want to learn how to crochet, but might not necessarily know anybody or might not necessarily feel like comfortable with you coming physically into their house or you going or them going into your space to crochet. But from the comfort of their own house, putting on a computer or putting on a television and watching you crochet and oh, this is how you do it step by step. They'll pay for classes. So you do the, you, you, you film the class one time and now it plays consistently as people pay for the class. And every time it pays, it's what you get called royalties. You get a royalty every time it plays. That's a bomb going off, but I want you to drop the bomb. And there's several places where you can do this at. One of the places is called teachable.com. You go to teachable and it walks you through the steps. You pay a fee and you're able to record yourself doing something. It could be break dancing, teaching people how to dance. Hey, hey, hey. And then people say, oh, dang, I want to learn how to do that. It's 40 bucks or whatever. And now they learn how to do it. It could be math. You know how I many kids have trouble with math still in school or, or, or people going to college and they don't know how to do math. And they say, dang, can I do algebra? Like I can't do algebra or calculus. And now you're showing them step by step how to do it. You know how I many people would pay for that class. And now because they pay for that class, they're paying you for something that you did one time. Now imagine if you had 10 of those programs and it was each $40 each. Now those people will pay for those consistently because there's always gonna be new people that need that work that you know how to do. See, sometimes you're sitting on your gifts and your talents, but you've only been conditioned to go to work and work a job. You've been conditioned to go to work, work nine to five and make the donuts. It's killing your time, it's killing your energy, it's killing your creativity, it's killing your gusto, your will to live. Some people wanna die because they feel like they're not living. And right now, I hope that this message is giving you life, right? One of the places, like I said, that you could go there and, and, and teach people how to do uh, things online is teachable.com. Another one is mightynetworks.com. Another one is skillshare.com. Now you have to research these, right? I'll say it again, skillshare.com, teachable.com, and mightynetworks.com. These people are not paying me to say this, even though they should, but they're not paying me to say this. I'm just saying this because I wanna see the people that's watching this channel succeed. I wanna see you go further. I wanna see you do better. I wanna see you live out your life's purpose. And I wanna see my people happy, right? And so that's one of the things that you can do, right? You can, Even if it's cutting hair. Some people know how to do hairstyles, and, or, or cut hair and you could teach people how to do it or, or fix a car. You, you could get a camera, have somebody film it and teach you and teach people how to fix cars or teach people how to do, I don't know, bake a cake, something, be creative. Don't limit yourself, right? Long as it's, you know, it's classy, right? And so another thing is create a blog. You can create a blog, right? And it's gonna take work at first because you have to create it, you have to build an audience. And how that works is you put ads all around your blog. And when people press on the ad, you you, you get uh, royalties from that, you get paid from that. And so a blog, and you also could have what's called affiliate marketing with AdSense on the blog. <clears throat> and by doing so, you create content and when people press on the different ads, you receive income from that. And what it is, you have to build it up to the point where now you can have another person that you bring onto your team 
who's writing the same things that you used to write or or not even have audio blogs you can create an audio blog and you have other people on your team now who's putting this content up with the ads being there and as people begin to listen to it or people begin to play it you can begin to get uh, revenue from that but you have to build it up right so he's this is just a few these are just a few ideas on what you can do to create passive streams of income so that you yourself at some point do not have to do the work right and you have to have to come up with a whole lot of money to get these things started now there's a plethora more of things that you can do right and I just wanted to give a few of these because I wanted you to be able to start from somewhere small and be able to grow it into something big that you can have more time with God more time with your family more time with yourself and that you can live your best life now here on this earth before we leave this earth and go on to the next life I hope this message inspires somebody if you have not subscribed subscribe to this channel let's grow and like I said before do me a favor if you like this video hit that likes button and hit that share button share it on your social media share it with your friends share it with your family this is your man Mike Bowens I'm signing off until next time and I'm saying be blessed